Today, I want to tell you about the three big problems that we have in the mead making community. So let's talk about it. So, this video is all about bringing the community together by also bringing to light the issues at hand. And um, I want to start off by breaking this video into three main topics. So the first one is what I'm going to call the science debate. The second one is the communal divide. And the third one are YouTube mead making content creators. So let's first start out. Let me tell you a little bit about myself if you are unfamiliar with me. My name is Garrett. I run this channel, Man Made Mead. I've been in the mead community for a little less than five years. I am um, a very passionate mead maker and mead educator. So this topic for me is super important and I, again, I'm very passionate about uh, proper mead education and making sure that this community comes together. So let's first talk about the, the topic number one, the science debate. So this first topic is all about what I'll call the science debate, which is essentially us talking about yeast health. Yeast health is how healthy your yeast are. We know because of scientific research that yeast are their own organisms and require nutrients, they require temperature ranges, they require things to be optimal. Now the key word there is optimal. You can ferment a yeast in an um, unhealthy environment and they'll still put out a product. Now is that product going to be its best? Probably not. So what I'm referring to is this idea that because mead is a uh, the oldest beverage, um, thousands of years ago they had no idea about yeast health. Therefore, people sometimes assume that yeast nutrition doesn't matter because the Vikings once made mead without Fermate O or Fermate K or Dimonium Phosphate. I think if you were to time travel a Viking to this day and say, hey, I got this thing that will make your mead better, ferment faster and taste better, that they would be like, okay, give it to me. They wouldn't go, oh no, we stick to the traditions. I think that they'd probably see. Or if you gave them some mead that you've made with those things, they would absolutely find out. So the science debate is important because yeast nutrition is combated in lots of different ways. Some people believe that yeast nutrition is not important or yeast health is not important and that's not true. Please do not make a mead and assume that your yeast are just going to magically do everything on their own because that's what they're supposed to do. In truth, they do things when they're healthy and when they can ferment at their best. So. We have things like Fermate O, Dimonium Phosphate, Fermate K, yeast holes. All of these things are used to feed your yeast. You can feed your yeast in multiple ways, including taking all of your nutrients and putting it in the beginning. You can also use a staggered nutrient schedule. We've also developed things like the Tosna, and Tosna 2.0, Tosna 3.0, which are all methods by which you feed your yeast. I know this is a newer debate, newer being of, as of 30 years ago, but it's still important. Science holds true. We have found out new things. Let's use the new ideas we have to make better mead. So let's now talk about the communal divide. So the communal divide is this truth that the mead community is divided by two different forks. Um, uh, I kind of view it like a Y. At the bottom of your Y are all mead makers in general as they start, okay? As the mead making begins in your world and you start to use ingredients, people have started to label certain ingredients as natural or unnatural. And when you start to make those meads and use some ingredients, you go down one of two forks. You can either go down the quote, natural brewing fork, which is where you're using what people have quoted as natural ingredients, or you go to the other side and you are a unnatural mead maker. Now, can you flip back and forth and do that? Yes. But why do we have a divide like that? The bottom of that why is the truly where we are. It should be mead makers in general. We should all be in the same team. And I want to use this as a time to say, 
let's get rid of this divide and let's be mead makers together who brew by our own desires and what you want to use. When you hop on Reddit, when you hop on any social media platform that talks about mead and you start listing your ingredients, about a third to a half the time, somebody's gonna get on there and be angry that you've used something that is quote natural or quote unnatural. And it's just not, it's not cool. Um, we are here to do the same thing. We're here to make a beverage that we enjoy and the method by which you do it is your choice and the ingredients by which you do it is your choice. So I urge you, if you're on either end in a, a aggressive manner, do not yell at somebody because they don't use the thing you like to use. It is totally okay to use all natural ingredients or totally okay to use some un unnatural things as well. The truth is, you're probably not gonna taste that person's mead. And let's say they include something like um, potassium sorbate and you don't wanna use that in your brew. You're not gonna taste it. If it's a commercial mead maker, you don't have to taste their stuff. So getting on there and yelling at them is not gonna help, vice versa. If someone's using a natural ingredient and the unnatural people don't like that, that's not that's not cool either. <laughs> let's just let's be friends. Come on. So um, I understand this though. Here's what important. Here's what is important. There are some ingredients in the world that are tougher for some people. For example, some people have a sensitivity to potassium metabisulfite, which is a preservative slash stabilizer. If you have that sensitivity, that's totally okay to not use that stuff but don't go and scream at somebody because they used it. Now, of course, if you're tasting someone's brew that has used it, you know, hold some caution, but just be kind about it. Let's get rid of the two whys and let's come together and be mead makers together who encourage each other, who help each other grow and experiment in good ways. So the last topic is the biggest one and this is the YouTube content creator side. So our YouTube content creator side is broken down into three sub points. So first is the history of the YouTube uh, mead making community. The second thing is going to be our consumer versus our producer mentality that we see. And the last one is the adaptation of information. So let's unpack the first one. The history of YouTube mead making goes back uh, five to nine years ago. So you have a mix of videos, old videos, new videos that have come out in the past five to nine years. It's a big range, but um, as far as content creators who have produced content on a regular basis, uh, when I first started about four years ago, um, there was really only two major people and they were Canadian Sasquatch and Grown Film Meadery, uh, Ricky Klein. So both of them were putting out content and really paving the way for mead making content in general. And I highly respect both of them. I've had conversations with both of them. They're incredible people and their channels are still alive if you would like to go ahead and check them out. They started this off. I came along, started making mead content myself as a new brewer and I learned everything from them. And I also just enjoyed getting to make new things. Since then, there has been a huge explosion of mead making channels, which is amazing. And I love that people are getting into the hobby and people are being creative and making things. Please do not hear me say that in any negative way. I truly enjoy everybody who's making things and I encourage you, if you would like to make your own mead making channel, you should do it. There's a little bit about the history. I've been around it. I've seen the growth, I've seen the change, and I've also experienced the producer side and the consumer side in that time. Um, I still to this day consume mead making content, meaning that I watch videos people post. I learn from them. I grow because I'm consuming content. Now there's the other side of the world, which is the producer, which is like myself, like any other mead making channel. As a producer of content, here's where the problem comes into play. You cannot produce bad content as a mead maker and put it out there for people. You cannot show bad methods. You cannot show things that will harm a mead maker's career. Most of the people who watch mead making videos, um, I would say about 30% to 40% are new brewers. So when people go to a channel and they see somebody practicing a bad method, they think that is normal. And then they go and reproduce that method themselves something goes wrong with their brew and they get mad that something went wrong and then they're scared off from mead. 
So people who create poor mead content that damages meads in general are inhibiting the growth of this community. So for example, a couple things that might be bad practices that you could pick up from somebody. Um, if you are making a mead and after the fermentation ends, you start to, you put that mead into a bucket and you pour it, like literally pour it into something else, you've aerated the mead, you've added oxygen, most likely spoiling the brew. If you are not sanitizing things well and you're putting stuff in that is not, not sanitized, you're gonna possibly risk bad fermentation. If your mead develops mold, and you see a YouTube person take and scoop that mold off or say, that's okay, mold's not a big deal. That's bad practice. Anything that shows people a bad practice is okay because somebody says it is wrong. So my um, urge is for anyone who produces mead content to also consider the power that they have for new brewers and for experienced brewers. Um, there are a lot of confident voices here on the internet, as we know, and there are a lot of uh, some confident mead making voices that aren't always right. So make sure you're consuming content and you're second guessing content that has a fishiness to it. I, I don't wanna say don't support those people, but let's be honest and look at those people and, and question sometimes their methods. Do not just uh, assume that somebody's right because they said something boldly. Um, everybody, you, I could get up and say the dumbest thing in the world as loud as I humanly can. Does that make it right? No. Consume good content and make sure that you are, um, as a consumer, caring about the community too. So let's hold each other accountable, including myself, and I'll tell you uh, some of my mistakes here in a second. Ultimately, you watching this right now make the biggest difference as on the people who, who are producing the content and as the people who are sharing the content as well. So if you see somebody practicing a bad thing, it's okay to, to say, hey, I don't know if that's the best. Make sure you say things in a nice way, but you can also do that. Also, when you consume content and you share the content, share the stuff that you think is true and that is valuable, don't share poor content. Let's talk about the last one. This is adaptation of information. So what I mean by this is as the mead making community grows and our knowledge of mead grows, we are um, constantly developing new ideas, new techniques, new things. Just in the past 10 years, stuff like Fermaid O and our organic yeast nutrient has come out. And that is a revolutionary for us, but that means that we change old methods and we adapt new information. For, for the producers of content, that means that I might put up a video and that information becomes outdated as I learn new things. For example, I created a uh, video about pasteurizing. I didn't include all the great ways to pasteurize. And so my whole purpose there, or my uh, realization was that I don't need to leave that video up because it's not the best content that I can produce and it's not giving completely accurate con er, information. So. Ultimately, I pulled that video down. Same thing for this three-way coffee meet I made one time. Um, it didn't turn out great, and I don't wanna give up people bad information. So we as YouTube people should be able to pull down videos. We should be able to step back and say, hey, I didn't produce the best content then, and I need to pull that down. And this goes back to the producer side. It can hurt to pull down a video that is maybe extra popular. But the vast power that a very popular video that gives bad information about mead making has over good information is, is bad. So make sure that you, like a, a very popular video that has bad information needs to be taken down regardless of how, how many views it gets or how much money it's made. So it's not about the views, it's about the education. So, I plea with you as a consumer, make sure you are understanding that we are learning alongside you. New information comes out every day and that's super important. My last point, people have opinions about mead making, going all the way back to the natural side, unnatural side, to ingredients, to yeast and all these things. And those things are opinions. If you see somebody make a video about something and they are just belligerently saying they don't like it, um, before you jump on the bandwagon, make sure you have experience yourself before you say you don't like something. Um, if I make a mead with a yeast and it turns out poor, 
That doesn't mean that I should get on and say, oh, the Lauvin QA23 is the worst yeast in the world and nobody should ever use it for anything. That's, that's, that's an opinion. Also, there's a good chance that my experience would be different than yours. I support a lot of mead making channels. There are some channels I don't support and I want to encourage you to support the people who are putting out content that betters the community, that doesn't just better their wallets or doesn't just better their ego. So I am gonna put a list of uh, mead making channels down below of ones I would highly encourage you to check out. And um, I hope that you will run forward with this charge to make the mead community better by being honest, by coming together as one, and by caring about each other in a very kind way. We do need to hold each other accountable, but we need to do it in a proper way that helps us grow. I hope you see my passion for it. I hope that you will feel passionate about this community. Let's grow together. Let's take these three big problems and squash them. And let's become one bottom of the Y mead making group together. I hope you've enjoyed this. I would love your feedback. Let me know what you think down below and I will be back with a future or well, another video soon. Cheers. Mm -hmm.